Hello everyone, this is Andrew, and I found something quite cool the other months. I would like to share with you what I've found so far, and it has to do with sorting potions. So, what is a potion sorter, firstly? A potion sorter, it basically sorts potions, but it's sort of different from what you normally would sort, in the sense that it doesn't just differentiate, it's not differentiate between potions and um, other unstackable items. The goal of a potion sorter is to be able to sort the individual potion types themselves. Up till now, the only method that was able to sort potions by their type was to basically brute force it. Um, if I start a brew, regardless or not whether or not I actually finish the brew or not, it will use up some fuel. Since one blaze powder is able to brew 20 potions, you have to put a water bottle in and out over and over and over again at least 20 times for something to change that is readable. And in this case, we can read off of something like the fuel here to tell whether or not the potion is a uh, water ball or uh, the potion that we want to filter out. Right in front of me here I have Ilmingo's potion sorter. Showcased in one of his videos, it is able to sort between different potion types by using the exact same method that I showcased earlier. How it works is when a potion enters here, th this brewing stand which is down to its last fuel bar will Drain this blaze powder when a water ball enters. This can be read by a hopper, which contains another blaze powder in it, to determine whether or not this is the potion type that we want to filter or not. I can demonstrate it right now. As you can see, it was able to recognize that potion, but now it also has to reset this entire thing for its next use. This can take quite a while as it has to insert the potion 19 times over in order to bring this back down to one bar. As this relies on the blaze item running out, this will also use one blaze powder per every water bottle you sort. This is actually normally fine for technical servers, but for other servers, this might be too expensive for a sorting system. Moreover, as I said earlier, this machine is quite slow. And so, because of that, it hasn't been really practical to sort potions in storage systems. Fortunately, we now have an alternative. Right over here is a machine that I've made that is able to sort potions at hopper speed. Now, as you can see, it's quite small. And it is able to do the same thing that that machine does. It is able to sort water and or other potions from anything else. I can demonstrate that right now. In my hand, I have a barrel containing some items. If I place it into input, you can see that it all gets sorted quite quickly. Water goes here and potions go here. Instead of using the fuel mechanic that Ilmingo's potion sorter uses, this one uses a more novel approach to figuring out whether or not the potion is uh, the type that we want. It still uses blaze rods, but it only uses one every 20 water potions it sorts. How is this able to do this? Through the usage of a cud. A cud is a uh, comparator update detector and one thing that I found while looking at the game's code was that a comparator's update detector is also able to detect when not only when an item comes through a brewing stand but it's also able to detect when the brewing stand starts brewing. As the comparator update detector can tell us when the brewing stand has started brewing we can now use this to filter potions at really high speeds. Notably, this one is at hopper speed. Extending the idea that I've shown over there, we can create something a little bit more complicated. 
This over here is a potion encoder. Now, this instead of filtering items over there, this one will take a potion and spit out a binary signal telling you some information about the potion's characteristics. Let me demonstrate. I'll be putting a single water ball in here, and from this you can see how this works. The potion is sent through each of these green stands, each with a different item, and from that we are able to get a binary code that signifies what can brew with that water bottle. In our case, a water bottle can brew with nether wart, Sparanta spider eye, redstone dust, glowstone dust, and gunpowder. If we put in another potion, it will correspond to a likely different code. This machine is able to encode at hopper speed, meaning it is able to process a potion every 8 game ticks. Here I have various potions in a barrel, and I can take that barrel and put it through the machine. Potions will begin to go through the system, and we'll get a synchronized signal on the output to indicating the different potions that come through it. So, you may be still wondering, what is a comparator update detector? Now, a comparator update detector is really just a comparator that has been in a state that it's not so really supposed to be in. For example, when you cover a, a chest, a comparator will actually turn off even if the chest has an item in it. But if we push a block over it or pull it, um, though the chest state has changed, the comparator will not update. And so this comparator will now become a comparator update detector. What do I mean? If, for example, I do something in this barrel, such as opening it or clicking on a slot, you can see that the comparator update detector fires. This is because every time I do so, a comparator update is sent to that comparator, which allows it to change its state. This happens not only when I interact with it, but also when things like droppers and hoppers feed items into a barrel or other container items. There are multiple ways you can make a compare update detector. Using a chest is just one of them. In my filter, for example, I use this one. This has the exact same concept. I do anything in that barrel, it turns off that comparator. But if I press this button, it's reset and turned on again. Let's look at the code to see how it all works. From looking at the comparator blocks code, we can see immediately that the comparator block is updated whenever the update power method is called. This method will create a scheduled tick for this block two game ticks later for it to change its output signal. We can look at what calls this update powered method and see that it is called by abstract redstone gate block, which is a parent class. From here, we can see it's called by neighbor update, which we find all the references to that. We can find that ultimately it leads us to the worlds. In the world code, we can see that it is called by update comparators. This update comparators method does exactly what it says, which is it sends out comparator updates and only comparators. This is what the comparator update detector actually detects. Not only does it detect redstone updates, it actually detects comparator updates, which is an entirely separate update system that is specifically for comparators. What's unusual about this update comparators method is that it is called by a lot of other containers for their inventories. We can see this in their references. Looking at the references to update comparators, we can see that there is a variety of blocks that also call it, but what we're interested in is the block entity class. In this block entity class code, you can see that it's called by a method called mark30. This mark30 method, in turn, is called by a variety of things. 
things that call the mark dirty method, we can see that it is called by the brewing stand block entity. Looking at the code for the brewing stand, we can see that the mark dirty method is called in the tick method. Specifically, however, the mark dirty method is called in only certain situations. For example, it is only called when the brewing stand has started to brew. Ultimately, this is what allows us to filter potions easily. Because this mark dirty method in this ticking method is only called in that certain situation, we are able to isolate the signal for this mark dirty method and figure out whether or not the potion is brewable with that specific ingredient. Now, that is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.